Hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of An Anthropologist Watches Glitter and Lasers. Sorry, I had to remember who I was watching. It's spooky season. Woo. Anyway, um, <laughs> I just got done recording um, a video about glitter and lasers to Spanish fashion halls. Um, one was she was trying to shop and the other one was a lookbook. It, it's probably very edited, but go watch those to get my opinion of her traveling and her attitude when she's shopping and traveling. I'm very critical. Spoilers. Now, that being said. This is Anna's travel story. Time. God, is her name Anna? Please tell me her name is Anna. This is Glitter and Lasers story time where she's talking about the trip that she took to Spain. Um, so I want to listen to that as well. I remember watching this before and I got stuff to say. Anna is, God damn it. Glitter and Lasers is part of, um, or used to be at least part of the fat acceptance and the health at every size, AKA Hayes movement. And I don't know if she still is because she has recently started losing weight for health reasons. And I know that's a big no, no in the Hayes and the FA communities. So I don't, I don't know if she's still part of that, but I know that she still complains about it because we'll talk about that in another video that we'll watch later. But her size has complicated her health, whether she wants to admit it or not. And she doesn't necessarily admit it because that I think is still ingrained in her as part of her phase rhetoric, phase being fat acceptance and haze together because I'm lazy. And so she still tries to adhere to this idea that she is healthy, even though she's clearly not. And that bothers me. Um, she also does a lot of like fashionista clothing haul things. I don't particularly like her fashion, but I don't think she'd like mine. So that's fair. Um, that's fine. So there's that. I myself am an, an anthropologist by training. I am an archaeologist retired and those are my creds. So there you go. Everything is my opinion. I'm not affiliated with anyone. So there's that. And oh, and I'm still recovering from the Rona. So if I sound a little rough, that's why I also have the Rona brain. So sometimes I just start staring off into space for no particular reason. Like right there. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah, I want to go over this video with you guys and just kind of it's been a minute since I've watched it. So some of this stuff might strike me as new again, even though it's not. She is sped up to time and a quarter. And oh, before we get started, I want to thank all of my members. You guys rock. I want to thank all of my subscribers. You guys also rock. And I want to thank everybody who's going to hit that like button because you guys also rock. And uh, yeah, so now let's get started. Let's get into this video. As of you know, I just got back from a trip to Spain and Portugal. And I'm sure you've seen some really quiet shorts to me. where I'm in fabulous dresses, or maybe you've checked out my other channels and seen photos. And it looks like I had a banging time. But in reality, it really didn't look like she had a good time. I just reviewed those two videos, um, one of her shopping and one of ones that is her lookbook. She looks miserable. Honestly, she spends the entire shopping video complaining. And then in the lookbook video, she spends quite a bit of that time. Well, she spends some of it complaining. And then the rest of it, she just looks miserable. She just looks miserable. And I know she was sick. Because I've watched this one and she does mention that in the lookbook video that she's feeling under the weather. But in general, that whole trip, she just looks uncomfortable and miserable and she complains a lot. So if that's you having a good time, damn. On that trip, every single thing that could possibly go wrong went wrong. And I felt like old me would have lost her damn mind. But new me was able to be resilient. And the comparison there concerns me. Because if that was her being resilient, she must have been unbearable before. And in thinking about this, I thought I would tell you the tale of everything that went wrong but then also tell you how I dealt with it. So that if you're struggling with resiliency, 
um, maybe you'll learn a couple things. So with that, let's get into it. So I had been planning this trip to Europe. FYI, there's an ad in here later for better health. I don't like better health. I don't, I think it's kind of shady and I've not heard good things about it. And to be perfectly frank with you, I priced it out one time because I was curious and it costs just as much to use BetterHelp as it does for me to go see my actual therapist in person in their office. So it's not saving you any money if you're someone that likes face-to-face -face, um, uh, therapy. So there's that. And also, I pay out of pocket and my insurance doesn't cover it. And I don't think my insurance would have covered better health either. So I just, this is an anti ad for better health. But anyway, let's get into it. For months, literally for months. And it was literally scheduled down to like two hour in increments. And a lot of it was like coordination with partners and with like people to make some really cool things happen that wouldn't be able to happen without them. <laughs> it, all just, it all just fell apart. It all just fell apart. Let's like start at the very, very beginning. So we flew to Barcelona. That's where we started the trip. And when I got there, I mean, we were all hungry. We didn't really eat anything on the plane. So what did we do? We ordered room service. And you would think that's fairly safe. <laughs> no. In fact, we all got food poisoning. Except me, having a sensitive little tummy, had like violently, explosively bad stomach issues. And it was like to the point where I couldn't eat because, you know... What comes up must come down. <laughs> I was gross. I was gross and I was really dehydrated. So I like wasn't eating, but I was still trying to do everything, but I was sick as hell. And it got so bad that eventually when we got to Valencia, which was our second city, um, I was so dehydrated and so malnourished because I couldn't keep anything in that I literally passed out in bed for an entire day. I don't know if malnourished is the word you're looking for there. Anyway. <sighs> That's the first sip of coffee I've had all day. I get that she was sick. And, you know, when you're having that particular issue where it's Mount Vesuvius out both ends, which is what it sounds like was going on. Um, keeping yourself hydrated is rough. Uh, but I, I, it's important that you keep yourself hydrated. I mean, anybody who's been sick knows that. Um, I don't, I think it's interesting that everyone else bounced back from it, but her. I would also be very interested to know what the hell they ate. But this is the beginning. And it's a shitty way to, no pun intended, it's a shitty way to start a vacation. Like, I understand that 100%. That's usually me around vacation or uh, around um, holiday times. I always get sick around Christmas and it's always miserable. And so I just freaking hate that time of year because I'm always sick. And so, yeah, no, I get it. But this is like... This is the beginning. And it's just downhill from and here. And we were panicked that I may not recover without going to the hospital. So I had a teleappointment with my doctor to try to figure out how to get better. And um, he was like, you're going to need to see a Spanish doctor, which was also a nightmare. But I ended up drinking like a whole bunch of Gator. Why was going to a Spanish hospital to see a Spanish doctor a nightmare? Like... If I were if I was in a foreign country and I felt that bad that I passed out unresponsive apparently for an entire day I would either be going home as much as that would suck or I would be going to a hospital to find out WTF is wrong with me because that would be very concerning to me and I just feel like not doing that was maybe a little irresponsible and also contributed to the rest of this vacation being such a nightmare. Really like Gatorade saved my life. So Gatorade sponsor me like for real, but no. Gatorade probably really did actually save your life. 
being dehydrated is one of the worst things you can do. And if you're already sick on top of it, it's like even worse. And then I know that she was in 90 to 100 degree weather. Like, okay, healthy queen over I here. Survived on the Gatorade. And I thought I was better, right? I thought things were better, things were great. And I just wrote it off. I wrote, eh, bumps in the road happen, right? This is it. The big issue of the trip has happened because no matter what trip you take, guys, by the way, something always goes wrong. And so I just assumed that this had been the thing that had gone wrong and that the rest of the trip would just be the magical experience that I planned. And I'd already missed so much. Uh, I had, you know, tours and stuff that I wasn't able to go on because I was literally just doing the bare minimum and then falling apart in the hotel room at night. So finally I felt better and it was great because there was this amazing hike we're going to go on, which you can uh, check out on my adventures channel, which will be up in a little bit. Um, If it's the hike of her going up to the monastery, she was freaking miserable. Like, grouchy, snapping at people, miserable. And I was so excited I got to do it. And at the end of the trail, there was this beautiful horse, and I love animals. So I had, like, a little moment with the horse, and I was, like, petting him. Okay, this is not the same trip, then. Jeez, please. And it was, it was very sweet and serene. That's a cute horse. I will I give him that. No, is that apparently my biology decided to like change it up on me. And now I was suddenly severely allergic to horses. And within about 15 minutes after petting this horse, my eyes turned bright red. And slowly the whole like face like this was swollen. And especially on one side, it was so bad I like couldn't open my eye. And <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? I thought I was through all this stress. And that's when I started to feel like a little bit more defeated, right? One, one issue I can deal with. Two issues. It's like, it's tough. On the one hand, like if she's never had an allergy towards a horse before and then she suddenly does have an allergy. I mean, I, I guess it's possible. But my other concern would be like the horse maybe was in like some poison ivy or some poison oak or something. Because that's a pretty severe reaction um, to something that you've apparently never had a reaction to before. So... Again, that would be another thing that would make me go to the freaking doctor because that's sudden and scary. And and she clearly has the money. Like, it's not like she's not going to the doctor because she doesn't have the money. And in this moment, I kind of reflected back to what old me would do. And when I say old me, I mean me before therapy, me before working on myself and me before understanding like what really matters to me. Because I think when you know what matters to you, you can let anything that doesn't directly affect that like go. And I would say if you are in the beginning and you don't know where to start, the first place I would start is therapy. I think it's the easiest like way to better your life quickly. And when I say quickly, not as quickly as you think, because anyone who's gone through therapy knows it does take time. But it is, in my opinion, the most direct route to self-improvement. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with her. I think she's right. Um, definitely therapy is a good way to go. Not everybody has access to it. So it's a little it's it's difficult for a lot of people. I didn't have access to therapy uh, up until four years ago. So, so I I'm definitely been in both camps. I understand not being able to go to therapy and desperately needing therapy, and I also understand like being able to go to therapy and taking advantage of that and how much better you feel. Um, so do I think better help is going to be a solution to people who were like me four years ago, prior to four years ago? No, I wouldn't have been able to afford better help then either. OK, I, could, I didn't even have insurance because I couldn't afford insurance. So that's why. And even now that I have insurance, I have Medicaid. I don't use Medicaid to pay for my mental health care because it's not up to par in my opinion but if it's all you have access to it's better than nothing so if you're eh, other way if you're someone on medicaid and that's all you have access to use it it's it's literally better than nothing if you're someone who doesn't even have access to that I understand how you feel. I really do. And it's very frustrating. And the best I can say to that is like, 
try to create a supportive group of friends around you or loved ones around you, because that's going to be the next best thing to fall back on. Um, because, yeah, not being able to get help, it sucks. But if this is just a better help ad, yeah, we're going to skip that. All right, back to back to the story. I also have a link down below in the description. It's betterhelp.com slash glitter and lasers. It'll get you 10% off your first month. I always like to share with you guys things I've used in my own life. This helped me. Maybe it'll help you. Anyway, going to therapy taught me to really understand what matters to me. So sitting in there where I felt really frustrated, my eye was completely swollen. I was popping Benny's, Benadryls, not drugs, Benadryls. And, and you know, taking, washing my eyes and body copiously to try to get all of the beautiful horse hair off of my body. I'm so sad I'm allergic to horses. Can we just talk about how crushing that was for me? If you know one thing about me, let it be known that I love animals and being allergic to any animals just makes me really sad. So it was a finding that I was not happy with, but she never been near a horse before that would suck to find out that way honestly as i was scrubbing my face i was sitting there with my eye completely swollen thinking about all the things that we had scheduled to shoot that we weren't gonna be able to shoot all the parts of this trip that were now going to be not as exciting because of the fact that my face was swollen and i was now limited i remembered with like what mattered to me right and i realized the most important thing to me right now in my life and this might change is my health and even though there's lots of amazing things I was going to miss out on, missing out on them would mean that I could be healthy. And this is going to become a theme because this is not the last thing that went wrong on this trip. Oh my gosh. So it honestly doesn't sound so bad, but it just gets worse. So the swelling did not go down completely. It still was pretty swollen in my face. We just put on sunglasses and a shit ton of makeup, to be entirely honest, and still filmed. And honestly, bravo to me for pulling off stuff. But I did take it slow. I didn't, like, push myself. Now, I took it a little too slow because we went to Algarve and, um, well, I decided to fall asleep in the sun and got really sunburned. So now I was covered in this, like, super bad sunburn. My eyes a little swollen. I'm just getting over food poisoning, so my stomach's not 100%. And we go to this really nice dinner. And I'm talking about the most expensive. This thing, the, the whole dinner story just irritates the crap dinner out of me. I've never been to in my life at a Michelin star restaurant that I had to get reservations for like four months in advance. So I was like super hyped on this dinner. And we get there and I go to sit down and the chairs are tiny and they have arms. And I was like, no problem. It's OK. I'll just ask for another chair. Up to this point, I don't have a problem. But what did you expect? So I'm like, excuse me, man. I'm like, this chair is not going to work for me. And honestly, with what I was paying for this dinner, I deserved a chair that fit. Like, And that right there. Really? You deserved a chair that fit? You're going to a restaurant that is in no way designed for people your size because people your size are that rare. And you're ticked off because they don't have a super special chair sitting all the way in the back just waiting for your ass to show up. Tell me you're privileged without telling me you're privileged. Like, this was not like, you know, fancy McDonald's. This was like a nice... Fancy McDonald's. You're in a Michelin star restaurant and you compare it to fancy McDonald's. ...ass meal, so I deserved a nice chair. And so she's like, hold on, hold on, we'll get you another chair. Proceeds to bring me a slightly bigger chair, still with arms. And I'm like, ma'am. She's like, will this work for you? And I'm like, ma'am. We said the problem was arms on the side this does not solve the problem and she's like oh well this is the only chair we have and i would literally look at him like are you telling me you don't have one chair in this super expensive fancy restaurant or in the like around it that doesn't have arms so now i want you to go outside of the restaurant go ask your neighboring restaurants go ask go go to the corner store and buy me a chair that doesn't have arms because I don't fit into the stuff you already have. Go provide my ass with a chair. Like, yes, I'm sorry. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, my, I don't know if you guys have ever done this. If you're a thick girl, you know, it's where like half your butt is on the back of the chair and then you're just like free floating forward. So it looks like you're sitting, but really you're balancing. And did I want to balance for a nine course meal that was likely to take three to four hours? Hell no. But did I want to be at this dinner? Well, also kind of no, because again, I'm sunburned. I have a stomach issue and my eye is swollen. But damn it, I hadn't been able to do so many things that day that I was going to do this. <laughs> so help me, Bob. I was going to do it. So eventually, about 10 minutes later, they bring... It's funny to me that the thing that has to do with food is the thing that she 
she's is the hill she's gonna die on another chair out that is incredibly uncomfortable but at least it doesn't have arms and i'm like okay i'm gonna sit here and have this dinner i'm gonna do it and as i'm eating this dinner like as the meal goes on i feel progressively worse so that by the end of the meal i feel terrible like there's no other word for it i feel awful and i ignore it right i ignore it because i'm like everything's gone wrong i'm gonna eat my fancy meal because that's what i want to do and I lost, like, sight of, like, what I needed to focus on. Because looking back, I should have just gone back to the hotel. Because your girl was going to throw up later. That's, that's the plot twist. Actually, not a plot twist. But I ended up being sick again. And it wasn't from the food, guys. The food was amazing. Everybody else enjoyed it. I had a great time. It's just my body was, like, under siege. And I will say this. Working on my health has been great. If you'd just gone to the doctor the first time, he probably would have put you on some antibiotics or something to help your stomach or given you like an anti-nausea pill. And you probably wouldn't be having any of these problems or the problems would be less. I mean, you're still going to have the reaction to the horse because you're apparently allergic to horses. And that's just the worst way in the world to find that out. And then you fell asleep in the sun. <laughs> kind of an amateur mistake, but... As someone who doesn't see the sun unless it is necessary, physically necessary, <laughs> I don't sunbathe. Um, that being said, like, there's so many things here that are truly just the decisions that she made at the moment that have compounded to make it worse. And then to throw a fucking fit in this fight in this Michelin star restaurant, she's lucky they didn't just tell her to leave. It's a Michelin restaurant. They don't need you there. They don't care. They've got their Michelin star. They're good. You know? <laughs> but I've. it's also led to me like pushing out of my comfort zone a lot, which means I bump up against some things that are inaccessible. And she still doesn't go to the doctor, I don't think. Or does she finally go to, to the doctor still, at this until one? Until I figure a couple other things out about how my body works. And that's what had happened on this trip, is I never let myself get better, so I just got worse. Speaking of getting worse, the tale of the worst trip over and ever. Is and, and that's kind of the end of it. Like, she never, she never took the steps to get better. She just drank Gatorade and put Benadryl on her face and was like, oh, that should fix the problem. And then it didn't. Yeah. There's doctors for a reason, people. Not over. Because once we got to Lisbon, which was our next city... I got super sick. It started with sinus issues and not being able to sleep and developed into a full-blown chest infection. So I actually spent most of Lisbon, I did, you know, during the day and then at night I just slept. I didn't even eat at restaurants. <laughs> I, I don't know much about the food of uh, Portugal. Actually, I do because my grandpa lived there, but I, on this trip, I did not enjoy it. I, I did eat the hotel's rotisserie chicken three times and it was delicious. No regrets, but <laughs> that's what I did. And eventually it started to kick into me that I was pushing too hard. And I wish I'd gotten to this point earlier. And I wish I had maybe accepted help. Like maybe I'd seen a doctor in Spain rather than just doing a telehealth appointment with my doctor who did recommend that I see a doctor in Spain. But I was too proud. Again, I'm learning and growing through all of these experiences as well. But I finally realized at the end that if my health was the most important thing, every choice I'd been making was against the thing I wanted to support the most. And what I learned from this trip and about my own resiliency is that sometimes making the right choice sucks. Like sometimes making the right choice for your life and your progression is not fun and it's not good. And I know we talk a lot about like self-care and like, you know, all the fun things that are associated with self-care. Like, I think she's getting ready to say self-care also includes going to the doctor when you're sick. Uh, but in case she doesn't, self-care also includes going to the doctor when you're sick. Especially when you're traveling abroad. Masks and spa days. But there's also an element of self-care that is like deeply depressing and sad. The best self-care I could have had is to just chill out and not do anything for a couple days at the beginning of this trip. I mean, the thing, the fact that you passed out for 24 hours, I think would have been your first wake up call to that. I, I don't understand people sometimes. I let myself really heal. But I didn't listen to myself and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I knew that it wasn't aligned with my own goals in any way. It was just purely focused on having fun. But sometimes the right choices aren't fun. And when I finally let myself rest, I realized how much damage I'd done because I didn't stop, right? Because I just kept 
pushing my body and my body got weaker and weaker and eventually I got a chest infection. And I think at the end of the day, I walked away from the trip. I could have been really upset, right? I planned this four month trip. I worked so hard and everything. I booked all these amazing experiences. Half of them I didn't get to do. In fact, the one thing I really wanted to do up and got canceled on the one day I felt good. So that also, you know, was a wrench. But what I really... That would suck. That, that would suck. I hate when things get canceled realize on realize at the end of the day is what I learned from this trip is that it's okay to not be able to do something. And it's also sometimes terrible to have to admit that. I know I talked a little bit in the beginning of this video about how this was gonna be about resiliency. And you're probably like, Anna, you like didn't do the right thing. Guess what? That's gonna happen all the time. I'm I, I feel like she's like, yeah, I didn't learn my lesson. You know, Anna, you did the wrong thing. I mean, wrong is strong. It's not the choices I would have made. And I think that because you didn't make the correct choice at the time, I guess it is the wrong choice. It compounded and, you know, you just, for whatever reason, and I find this with a lot of the FA people and the, and the Hayes people, like they are so determined to prove to everyone else that they're just as healthy and just as strong as someone who isn't morbidly obese because let's not pretend like she's not morbidly obese she is that they'll push themselves to the point of actually doing physical damage to themselves when if they had just paused or just not tried to do the same thing that a metabolically healthy person was doing I mean, yeah, it sucks to admit that you can't do that thing. But if you're that butthurt about it, your option is to lose weight and get healthy. She had a four month trip. She could have been basically training to go on this trip. You know, people who go on like the Appalachian hike, they don't most of them don't just hit the Appalachian Trail and start walking. There's training and preparation that goes into that. You know, you got to get used to walking a certain number of miles a day. Because if you don't, if you're doing the whole trail from end to end and there's no pauses and breaks in between, um, if you don't keep a certain pace doing the Appalachian, you you could die. <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's the reality of the situation. If you don't hit certain markers at the right point, you're going to get caught by the weather and the weather could potentially kill you. Or, or best case scenario, you're going to be trapped there until spring or summer, you know, until the next year. So even something that is that simple, you know, like I don't particularly view the Appalachian Trail as being like that, that like mind blowingly difficult of a thing to do. Even people who do the walkthrough all to get all at once. I think it takes like six months or something like that. I don't remember. You know, it's it's that kind of a thing. It's not like she's climbing Everest, is my point. Like, you knew you were going to be on a four-month trip. You knew you were going to be doing a lot of walking. You could have been basically training like a marathon. You could have been putting yourself through a walking pace on, a, on the regular to get ready for this. I mean, there's a lot of things she could have done leading up to this thing. And I feel like that if I knew I was going to be on that, I wouldn't just hit Spain at a cold dead run i would definitely want to warm up and not because i want to necessarily lose weight but because i don't want to get sick and i do want to be able to walk for a mile and not look like i'm ready to melt into a puddle of goo and die like i get that she was sick through a lot of this but if i got sick the first day and it didn't get better i would be going to a doctor you know they've got to have med check places there you know it's that kind of a thing. But these Hayes people, they just they're so convinced that they're just as healthy as everyone else, that they make these terrible health decisions and these terrible physical decisions. And it hurts them more in the long run. And then they don't learn their lesson. It doesn't sound like she learned her lesson here. You know, it sounds like she's getting ready to just kind of chalk it all up to, well, you know, Shit happens. Meh. 
it's not like she's learning to pre-plan and to make sure that she's in shape to do these kind of things and to have a contingency plan if she gets sick next time. Like, what happens when you go back? Are you just, you know, what's what's your plan if you go back and you get food poisoning again? Are, are you just going to suck it up again or are you going to go to an actual doctor or are you going to take medication with you that could potentially help? There's things you can take with you that are over the counter stuff, you know. It just doesn't sound like she's going to take any responsibility for any of this. And she's just going to chalk it up to, well, that's what the universe did. And I'm a resilient person because I didn't flip out this time. But you kind of did, though. And it's kind of on camera. I'm going to do the wrong thing probably once a week at least. Probably once a day, honestly. That's See, I just... Human. But I think resiliency is about taking those experiences that we fail at or make mistakes at or don't go the way we planned and getting up from them, and then changing our behavior so they don't happen again. That important piece of changing our behavior is, I believe, the fundamental core of resiliency. Okay, I mean, yeah. That's kind of saying you learn from the experience, yeah. Because things will always happen, right? But if you're always learning and growing, you can at least be confident that you got something out of that terrible experience. But see, you're not talking about preventative anything. You're just blindly walking towards a wall of fire and not understanding why it burns. So even though I was sick all the way through Europe, it's going to change the way I plan travel. It's going to change the way I listen to my body. And it's going to make it easier for me to tap out when something's not good. Okay. I, my own pride got the best of me on this trip. It did. But it's not going to get the best of me on my next trip because, as I said, this is a year of growth. And from this experience, I'm choosing to grow. Yeah, it sucked. But what I'm learning from it, well, it doesn't suck at all. So with that, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Again, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. You can check them out by using the link. I guess at the end, she does kind of say, I'm learning from this experience in her own way. But she doesn't really talk about preventative anything or like preparation or that kind of stuff. I don't know. I didn't hear exactly what I wanted to hear, but you know what? The world ain't perfect, yo. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over this because there's just... This kind of a thing is so haze and F.A. They just they expect everywhere they go to be exactly the same as what they're experiencing here. And this video, plus the other two videos that she the Glitter and Lasers did about her trip to Spain, the things that she says, the little snide remarks that she makes, her clear attitude towards the situation. I will give her some leeway because I know she wasn't feeling good. But at the same time, from her own admittance, she didn't do anything to fix it. She knew she didn't feel good. She had the resources to do it. She just chose not to because she was being proud. And so in the long run, it I don't know if it ruined her vacation, but it certainly like put a dent in it. You know, I just, I just, it blows me away sometimes. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave an airplane or a suitcase down in the comment section and be sure to leave a comment. If you have something to say, we can disagree um, amicably. We can disagree nicely, please. And yeah. So again, thank you to everybody who's going to hit that like button. Uh, thank you to all of my subscribers and thank you to all of my members. You are all wonderful people and I truly appreciate all of you. And I think there's one more of these I want to do in this beautiful outfit. And then I will see you all in the next one. Bye.